uh, welcome to Manifested uh, Publishers. We are continuing from the previous uh, session, that is question six, on uh, August 2024 economics paper. We read the question. Uh, state five features that influence the level of foreign direct investment. We put the question on the board. That is question six, uh, Roman A. Roman A. Uh, state five. State uh, five features. 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 That uh, influences that influences influences the level the level of foreign the foreign direct direct investment foreign direct investment fdi foreign direct investments the features that basically influence uh, that influence the level of foreign direct investment uh, the features if we talk about the features we know that some of the features that basically influence uh, the, the, the direct uh, foreign direct investment one would be favorable government policies in regulating the business we have also improvement in infra infrastructure we have the broader economic reforms. We also have development in technology and uh, attractiveness of the investment uh, climate. And I want to say if the climate is, is, investment climate is very good, we know that foreign direct investment will definitely be high. If you have a very good technology and infrastructure, we know for sure that the level of foreign direct investment will definitely be, be high in a country. So we can put them down and say, uh, one would be the first feature, favorable, favorable government, we call it the government, favorable government policy in regulating, in regulating the business, in regulating the business. The second one we say that uh, what you call an attractiveness, an attractiveness an attractiveness investment general investment general investment climate general investment climate and that is what you are saying that if we have uh, the general climate is, is is very good then we know that the investment the foreign direct investment will be very high if you have favorable uh, favorable government policies in regulating. We know that the investment level definitely will also be B I. Then we talk about development, development, development in the modern, in the modern, modern technology, development in the modern technology, development in the modern uh, technology. We can also talk about broader. A larger, broader, uh, what you call broader, economic, economic reforms. Uh, reforms. When you have this broader economic uh, reforms, we know for sure that there will be a higher level of foreign direct investment. And lastly, the last feature, stock factors that influence the level of foreign direct investment. We talked about improvement, what you call improvement, improvement in infrastructure improvement in infrastructure improvement in infrastructure so when you have a better infrastructure uh, that basically uh, enhance a higher level of foreign uh, direct investment foreign direct investment if we have poor infrastructure we know that the level of foreign direct investment will basically be low below also something that needs to be Actually, an area that needs to be covered is uh, on this for the learners is to get to understand 
the advantages of foreign direct investment and the disadvantages of foreign direct investment. That is how that particular question would go. We pick from the next question and we read that question. We say explain four determinants of money supply. Explain, that is 6b, uh, explain the four determinants, the four determinants, determinants of money, four determinants of money supply. Four determinants of money supply. When you talk about money supply, that is uh, money that is basically available to, to the economy. Uh, what are the factors that basically would determine the number of factors that would basically determine the level of money supply? One of it, we can talk about the bank rate or the interest rate. We know for sure that when the interest rates are very high, we know that the supply of money is low. And when the interest rate is low, uh, the supply of money is high. So we can put that on the board. We call the first one uh, bank bank rate let's talk the interest rate let's talk the interest rate we say when the interest rate when the interest rate is high comma the money supply the money supply the money supply is low the money supply is low while if the interest rate, if the interest, interest rate is low, is low, the money, we say that the money supply, the money supply is high. If the interest rate is low, the money supply is definitely high. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, the next factor that is uh, uh, selective, what you call credit uh, control. We can also have a factor called selective uh, credit control. Uh, when we have uh, when you have credit control measures, for example, selective credit control, we know that credit is basically given to uh, to a, a not all sectors of the economy, uh, given to specific sectors in the economy that would definitely lead to a lower supply of money. But if uh, credit is not given, uh, uh, credit is not given selectively. We know that. Uh, given to every area of the economy without selecting. Therefore, we know that the supply of money is going to be uh, going to be high. So we can put it what you call credit controls. Credit control. The second would be credit control. Uh, if the if there is a selective a selective selective credit credit control if there is a selective credit control uh, in the economy in the economy i.e the central we say that the central bank uh, the central bank uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, Commercial banks uh, issue orders, issue orders, we say orders to uh, the commercial banks, issues orders to the commercial bank, commercial bank, only to issue credits, only to issue credits to issue credits to selective areas, to selective, what do you call to selective area, areas, areas. This will lead to, this will lead to lower, lower money supply. This will lead to lower money supply as opposed, as opposed, as opposed to the credit, as opposed to the credit, credit.
credit being offered, being offered to all to all areas of the economy, to all all areas areas of the economy economy all areas of the economy. So if if credit is given uh, specifically to selective areas, we know that the supply of money is going to be low. But if credit is given to all sectors of the economy, then money supply would definitely be high. The next would be what you call the cash ratio. Cash ratio. What you call the cash, cash ratio. And the question is, how does the cash ratio basically determine, uh, uh, determine uh, the, the, the amount of money supply? How does the cash ratio uh, determine uh, the money supply? How does the cash ratio determine, uh, determine money supply in the economy? For example, when uh, the central bank, when the central bank, uh, when the central bank, we say when the central bank, when the central uh, bank, bank increases the cash ratio, increases the cash ratio, cash ratio, comma, this leads to lower, lower money supply, money supply. This leads to lower money supply, especially during the times of inflation, uh, leads to lower supply. And when, and when, when the cash ratio, when the cash ratio, okay, when uh, the, when the cash, we say when the cash ratio, ratio is low, is low, this leads to increase, increase, stock high money supply, stock high money supply in the, in the economy, stock high money supply basically in the economy, and that is what you call deflation. Another factor that will determine uh, the level of money supply in an economy, we call it the open market operation, OMO. We call it open, open, OMO, stock open market operations, open market operations. And when you talk about open market operations, this is a uh, buying, what you call buying and selling of the, of, uh, of the security, of the security, of the securities, buying and selling of the security uh, by the central, by the central bank, by the central banks, buying and selling of security by the central bank. We'll take, for example, you know, when there's a lot of supply of money in an economy, in order to reduce it, the central bank, uh, we say that the central bank, the central bank will sell security, security to the public, to the public, will sell the security to the public, public, to reduce, we say to reduce, to reduce the money supply, to reduce the money supply, to reduce the money supply in an economy, to reduce money supply in economy. So selling of the security, uh, basically to the public by the central bank, uh, that will definitely be reducing uh, supply of money. You say on the other hand, on the other hand, on the other hand, when uh, the when the central bank, when the central uh, bank buys security, buy security, security from the public, from the public, public, this comma this leads to increase. This leads to increase 
in the money supply, in the money supply, this leads to the increase in the money supply in the economy. Leads to increase in the money supply in the economy. That definitely will lead to increase in money supply in the economy. We can also talk about maybe a few things, you know, uh, that you can uh, do a more research on. Reserve, what you call uh, reserve, reserve ratio, what you call reserve ratio stock, uh, what you call the compulsory, compulsory, uh, compulsory deposit. And we just explain it as, as an additional point. Uh, the examiner basically needed four, and for each question, uh, there was the point and the explanation to it. So uh, as an additional one, that is reserve requirement. We know that uh, all the commercial banks uh, definitely hold reserves in the central bank. And you know when they increase the reserves, when the central bank basically increase the reserve deposit or the compulsory deposit, what happens to the circulation of money or money supply is definitely going to reduce as opposed to scenario where they reduce what you call the reserve requirement or the compulsory deposit. Uh, when you look at that question critically, the question is eight marks. So very important for the learners to understand that when you're tackling that question, there's the part of uh, the point and the explanation of that very point. And that marks the end of that question B, question B, question B6. Uh, we pick it from question six. See, that is the last question on six. We read the question. Using a well-labeled diagram, illustrate the long-run uh, equilibrium of a monopoly farm. We put it down. Uh, we say that using, that is C, using a well-labeled, a well-labeled diagram, using a well-labeled diagram, illustrate, 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 illustrate the long run, what you call the long run, illustrate the long run, equilibrium, long run equilibrium of a monopoly, of a monopoly, of a monopoly farm, a long run equilibrium of a monopoly farm. Very important to understand. Uh, we need to understand what a monopoly is. We know that uh, uh, monopoly farms, these are you know, a market where we have uh, a single farm or one seller with many buyers. But very important uh, to our concern is to understand that what happens in the long run for a monopoly farm. We need to understand that in the long run, basically these monopoly farms make what you call supernormal profit. In the long run, in the long run, Monopoly farms, poly farms make super normal, what you call the super normal uh, profits. Make the super normal profits. Basically makes the super normal profit. So we proceed to the diagram. On the y-axis, we have, this should be revenue and cost. Revenue and, uh, and, and cost. That is on the y uh, on the y axis, on the x axis, on the x axis, we have quantity, we have quantity, we have quantity. So two two key things, you know, how the AR and the MR curve will appear. How the AR and MR curve, AR you need to understand is above, is. So this is the MR, this is the AR curve, AR curve. So the first thing to establish, we establish where the farm, the quantity that maximizes uh, that profit. That is where MR is equals to MC. MR is equals to MC. That is where MR is equals to MC. So this we call long run MC. Long run MC, we call it the long run MC. So at that point, where they, the equal that is where, so we get the quantity, that is quantity, that basically would maximize, would maximize, would maximize our profit. 
But when a farm is making super normal, normal profit, we know that a, a, a C, what you call ma A C, average cost, A C at minimum, very important A C at minimum, minimum is what call is below, is below A R. To mean that A R always greater than A C at minimum. So we pick it here. We have uh, we have that. So this is uh, the long run, what you call the long run, long run AC. So at minimum, down here, that is at minimum, at minimum, at minimum, at minimum, at that very point, we call it C to represent cost. Then we have up here, so that is, will give us P or revenue. At that point, that will be P or revenue. So we can establish that, you know. Q, this value of Q as an explanation is where MR, where we maximize that profit, uh, is equals to MC. This Q uh, is equals to MC. Marginal revenue is definitely equals to MC. So where is the supernormal profit? The supernormal profit would be the shaded uh, part. The supernormal profit so this will represents the super, super normal, normal, what you call the super normal profit. Explanation. The diagram will constitute, uh, if the question is seven marks, uh, in most cases, the diagram will take about five marks. And the explanation, we know that uh, AC, we just put it here, AC, AC, at minimum, at minimum, at minimum is below, we know is below, uh, is below the AR. That AC at minimum is below the AR. Then you know that Q, quantity, quantity, quantity maximizing, maximizing profit, quantity maximizing profit is where is where the MR, that is marginal revenue, MR, which is marginal revenue, is equals to marginal cost. Uh, Q, quantity that maximizes the profit, which is this, uh, that is where MR is equals to MC. So the shaded region, shaded region, we just need to shaded, shaded, shaded region, we say it represents, represent supernormal, supernormal uh, profits, supernormal profits made in the long run. Supernormal profits made in the long run. So the shaded region will represent supernormal profits made in the long run. Of course, the number of areas also that needs to be Look at this. You can look at the short run, what happens in the short run. Uh, under monopoly, there are also the aspect of price discrimination, which is particularly also a very good area that is testable uh, in exam. Uh, that is how we particularly handle this question. That is question 6C. And that marks the end of uh, uh, question 6. Bye-bye. <laughs>